fall boating can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, the colors are gorgeous and the anchorages are quiet. On the other hand, the weather can be less predictable and temperatures, especially if you head north, can drop to the point where you're packing mitts in a toque before you're packing sunscreen. Fortunately, Jeannot has the perfect solution. And our friends at Central Marine have loaned us a sweet NC-795 Legend for this year's fall trip. NC stands for New Concept and represents a European design line of boats ranging from 21 to 46 feet in length, all with one thing in common, hardtop enclosures and real glass windows. This fall, overnight lows in Perry Sound were expected to drop into the single digits. So, a proper enclosure and diesel heater should really add a level of comfort to our fall trip. There are a few reasons we decided to head to Perry Sound. One, I haven't had a chance to get up there yet this summer. Two, there is a ton to explore in the 30,000 island region. And three, the colors this time of year should be spectacular. Trailering, you'll need a place to launch, and there are two great spots on the northeast side of Perry Sound Harbor, where the Seguin River empties into the bay. The public ramp at the bottom of Champagne Street has brand new docks and a large staging area. If you want more secure parking, give Kelly a ring at Perry Sound Marine to arrange a spot to stash your truck and trailer. We needed fuel, so we stopped by for a quick chat. We're located right downtown Perry Sound, right underneath the train trestle, which is basically how we get identified by most people. We're open all summer long. We start April the 1st and we close generally around the start of December. We have 295 slips available and we can store in the winter up to about 350 boats. We can take generally from 13, 14 foot boats up to around 32 or 33. We have washrooms inside, gas, People come here because when they fill up, they get a free pump out, so people like that as well. We have a marine store, we're a Mercruiser dealer, and we have certified mechanics to fix all makes of boats. Henry Wolsey Bayfield was appointed the Admiralty Surveyor for North America in 1817. In 1820, while surveying Georgian Bay, he named the well-protected harbour at the mouth of the Seguin River, Perry Sound, after Sir William Edward Perry, the famed explorer of the Northwest Arctic Passage. Perry Sound is definitely a hotspot for fall sightseeing by land, sea, and air. The Island Queen runs until Thanksgiving in October, as does Georgian Bay Airways. But we did not expect to see Ponant's 430-foot Le Champlain in the harbour on a scheduled stop from Milwaukee to Toronto. Talk about travelling in style. When we finally left Perry Sound, we were met with some less than ideal weather conditions. As soon as we left the protection of the harbour, we were exposed to weather one might expect this late in the season, which is probably why we were one of the only boats out on the water. Ah, there goes my nice clean windshield. Wow. Georgian Bay. Yay! Yay! Well, this is day one. We just arrived. We put the boat in. It's blowing like crazy, gusting to 50K. The rollers in the bay, just in this Perry Island Bay, are four or five foot. So small craft warning for sure. If we were an express cruiser right now, we'd be getting soaked. I'd have full wet weather gear on, and I'd be freezing cold. But in this little 25 footer, we're bone dry, putting through four and a half footers. Here comes a big one. <laughs> We've got waves kind of crashing over the bow. We're only doing about 10 miles an hour. We've only been in the boat for 10 or 15 minutes and already I'm just blown away. Like, we're in some pretty serious waves. I don't know if I'd be really happy even in the 37. So waves are actually coming over the bow a little bit and uh, we're, we're using the windshield wipers to see, so they've already come in really handy. It wasn't five minutes ago I was uh, dusting off the windshield and cleaning it. Well, that was kind of a waste of time because <laughs> it's just so down. But we are dry. If I've got the wind just coming off the port side, I close the port window, open up the starboard window, and we're dry, but we've got airflow to keep everything clear. And if you really had to batten it down, you might need a fan to clear the windshield. But what is so cool is that you don't have to stop boating. It's not that warm out, 16 degrees. And it's not stopping us at all. In fact, I'm pretty warm. As you can see, riding around our golf shirts. This is amazing. 
Knowing the weather would clear later this evening, we decided to head back to Perry Sound to wait it out. We could have easily pushed on, but we weren't doing the Genot or our equipment any favors in these conditions. This was also a perfect opportunity to take a closer look at the little end seat, which we will dive into later in the show. We have a ton more filming to do and have a slip reserved at Big Sun Marina tonight. With the sun getting low, I thought we'd catch a familiar sunset from the marina's elevated lookout. From mid-April to pretty much the end of August, on a clear night, you can catch spectacular sunsets from up here. But in October, I forgot. The sun sets almost 30 degrees further south. So for now, Big Sound Marina will be our home base until the crazy October winds die down. Later in the show, we will continue our journey around the 30,000 islands of Georgian Bay. Man, was I glad we waited out the weather. The conditions the next morning were absolutely perfect. Located at the very bottom of Bay Street, just past the Stocky Center and the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame, Big Sound Marina is within walking distance to downtown Perry Sound. We're primarily a transient marina geared to attracting people to come visit Perry Sound and area. And we have 50 amp services on the dock and uh, we're on town water here. So obviously it's all good clean water for filling tanks. So it's a great spot for transients to stop by. Ideal conditions for any boat, but a cool 15 degrees Celsius on the water validated our decision to run this fully enclosed Genot NC795. We cruised for over an hour between 30 and 40 miles per hour, warm and toasty the entire time. Talk about a boat made for Canada. With the sun shining, we were off to Depot Harbor, a place rumored to be haunted. If you decide to peek around, keep your speed down, one eye on your charts and the other looking out for hatcheries. They are scattered all over the place. Behind me here, you can see a marine farm. And my understanding is that this farm raises rainbow trout for restaurants all over North America. This is Depot Harbor, a ghost town in Perry Sound, built on Perry Island at the turn of the 20th century to export lumber and grain to the US and Europe. By the mid 1920s, Depot Harbor was considered one of the most prominent ports on the Great Lakes with over 1,500 permanent residents and a railway station receiving trains every 20 minutes at its peak. In 1945, most of the harbor facilities were destroyed when remnants of the grain elevator caught fire, setting off cordite stored on site for World War II. More evidence of the scale of this place can be found underwater, where remnants of the original wharfs still remain. And it's pretty cool to see that what used to be such a busy port is now busy again with a fish hatchery. After our quick but careful tour of Depot Harbor, we headed towards Deep Bay. Since the weather had become more cooperative, we figured we would take the scenic route and detour through the coveted hole in the wall. A small, narrow channel just over 110 feet wide separates the southern tip of Huckleberry from Wall Island. The cliffs on either side rise to almost 80 feet in height. Hence the name, Hole in the Wall. To get into Deep Bay, you have to drive up the middle of the Three Fingers on the northwest shore of Perry Sound. Man, I tell you, it's just spectacular up here. So no matter what the wind's doing, it is a dead calm anchorage. These all have road access by the looks of it. Deep Bay is a bit of an anomaly in that it sits on the doorstep of Georgian Bay, yet its small cottage ecosystem is completely protected from the nasty weather associated with the big lake. This will be our last stop today as we are running out of daylight. There are thousands of miles of shoreline in and around Perry Sound, which could take you an entire season to explore. Last week, we finished off in Deep Bay, so today, we continue our way up towards Franklin Island. Once you round Lighthouse Point, you will see the sandy shores of Kilbear Provincial Park. Kilbear is a big park, 4,300 acres big to be exact. From the lighthouse to the far side of Kilcorsey Bay is another four kilometers. This was where I learned to cliff dive. My father brought us up here in the 80s as kids, and years later, we come back with friends in high school. We loved it. Between the hiking trails, flat rocks for tanning, and clear water for swimming, Kilbear is one of my top favorite campgrounds in Ontario. Today, there are over 1,000 campsites spread over seven different campgrounds. These days, of course, we come by boat, which provides an entirely different perspective. Instead of hanging around Harold Point in the boat getting rocked by traffic, 
we continued west to Kilcorsey Bay. There are plenty of spots to anchor in front of Kilbear, but my favorite is this little bay just south of Kilcorsey. Midsummer, this place is normally packed, but in October, we were the only ones here. My wife and I like to anchor here for the day on our way to Franklin Island. The bottom is sandy, and the flat rocks warmed by the sun are perfect for afternoon naps. But this was not our final destination today. Far from it. We were planning to take this little pocket coop further north to a cool little resort on the north side of Franklin Island. With two more stops in between, it was time to boogie. But just before we hauled anchor, I noticed the schooner. With light winds, we had to take a closer look. We might be a powerboat show, but there is something majestic about a schooner with their sails full and nothing but the horizon ahead. What a day. Fair winds. There are a few ways to get from Kilbear to Franklin Island and Snug Harbor. The outer channel is stunning when it's calm, but if it's blown at all from the west, you might want to hug the shoreline and sneak through Canoe Channel, which is exactly what we did. Canoe Channel won't save you any time, but it will allow you a reprieve from strong westerlies. It was calm today, and we simply wanted to enjoy the scenery. This is why Georgian Bay is so well regarded for cruising. As you exit canoe, stick to the channel markers. There are plenty of rocks around here, but it is well marked with both red and green marker buoys. Snug Harbor is a great place to come in for dinner or just to reprovision a little bit. There's a famous fish restaurant called Gillies here. This is some of the best fresh pickerel you'll get on the bay. And it's not far from Franklin Island, it's not far from Perry Sound. If you've got a little bit bigger boat, you're gonna to wanna to park at the government dock. There's not a lot of space for too many boats over 25 feet, and Gillies is so popular it can get pretty busy, so not a bad idea to make a reservation in advance. Gillies is a family-run restaurant with a mini marina and small grocery store. They opened just before the May long weekend and shut down on Labor Day. Unfortunately, we called ahead for an interview, but missed them by a week. I do, however, have some photos I took when here last. After leaving Snug Harbor, our next destination was across the channel in Regatta Bay. Oh, one of my favorite places is Regatta Bay. A little piece of paradise, Regatta Bay on Franklin Island. Who says fall boating can't be warm? It's the 8th of October in Ontario near Perry Sound, and it's 14 degrees today. And with the sun out, it feels more like 25. But unlike the middle of August, there is nobody around. We have the entire anchorage to ourselves. And that's not something that happens often with Regatta Bay. This is a very popular spot. To get to shore, you'll need a tender of some sort. On our first trip, we were able to anchor close enough to shore to use the paddleboard as a makeshift ramp. But there are a few small docks in Regatta Bay that if unoccupied, will afford shore access. If you do come to Regatta Bay and it's a little bit too crowded for you, later in the show, we're gonna show you Not So Secret Bay otherwise known as Windsor Bay, on the other side of Franklin Island. And back in there, you can usually always find a spot, as long as you know how to thread your way in. And that's what we'll show you later in the show. Not all 25-foot boats have a windlass or an enormous anchor locker, but the NC-795 sure does. And is it ever nice, with a big remote, it's really easy to retrieve the anchor. If I was planning to anchor often, I would definitely upgrade this anchor to a Rockna or Vulcan. Sure beats hauling it up by hand. Join us later in the show as we continue our journey around Franklin Island and into some beautiful anchorages on our Fall Colors Tour of Georgian Bay. Welcome back to our Fall Colors Tour around Franklin Island on Georgian Bay in the 25-foot Genoa NC-795. Over the course of the last few days, we have hit a number of destinations in and around Perry Sound. Today, we were on the final leg of our journey. Earlier in the show, we made our way from Perry Sound all the way out to Regatta Bay on the southeast side of Franklin Island. This is where we will continue our journey. After a long day on the water, we were looking forward to grilling up a few sausages and chilling on land with a campfire. Fortunately, Rockwood Resort was still open and willing to accommodate a couple of boaters in October. Nestled at the top of Sand Bay on the north side of Franklin Island, Rockwood is a cottage resort in a protected bay with enough dock space for a few medium-sized boats. 
We've got 10 housekeeping cottages and we run pretty much through May through ice up. So our cottages are cottagey. Uh, we try and style them in a nice Georgian Bay fashion, um, but you've got all the amenities you need to make your own meals, hang out and enjoy Georgian Bay. Most of the cottages are a two or three bedroom. Ours had a bunk over a queen and could sleep five. Coming from the city, the contrast is striking. Want to slow the world down a bit? This is the place to do it. Majority of our customers come from Toronto area, some from the northern US as well. It is hard to believe that such a tranquil place is but a two and a half hour drive from Toronto, where the bustling sounds of the city transform into the peaceful sounds of the bay. In peak season, we rent for week minimums, and we're between 1,200 and 1,400. And then in the off season, we're about $200 a night. I would pay $200 a night just to have a hot tub and campfire up here. We lovingly call it the redneck hot tub. Uh, it's wood fired, and we fill it every day out of the bay. So the water's fresh right out of the bay every single day. You got it. Smooth, flat rocks are to be expected around here, but Rockward had another surprise, a big, sandy beach. The beach is great for kids, great for adults too, but it's, it's kind of a rarity. This area, we've got more sand, so we do get a nice beach here, nice, easy incline into the water. Since the beach faces southeast, the sun warms it all day. We're right on the north edge of Franklin Island, so crown land galore, canoeing, kayaking, swimming, boating, world-class fishing, you, you got it all up here. If you don't own a boat, not to worry. You can drive up and rent a boat from Zach for $90 a day. As the sun started to fade, we set about grilling our food and building a fire. A full moon over the bay and a few tunes on the Bluetooth speaker kept us up fairly late. But what a way to wind down the day. After a late night soak in the hot tub and a restful sleep, we awoke to an incredible sunrise. This would be our last day on the water and would culminate with a paddleboard ride in Windsor Bay. But first, I wanted to check out the famous lighthouse on Red Rock, just south of the Mink Islands. The winds are light. We still have a four-foot swell. It shows you you be a little careful on Georgian Bay. But the 795, she's all sealed up, so even though we're getting a little spray, we're bone dry in here. Such a cool boat. Well, there's Red Rock, famous lighthouse protecting big ships from a nasty set of rocks just north of us. Red Rock Lighthouse went operational in 1881, replacing the original lighthouse built on Old Tower Island in 1870. The Red Rock location was ideally positioned close to the shipping lane, but its exposure to any westerly weather meant it took a beating. In severe storms, the sea could break over the entire lighthouse. And after only a decade, its wooden crib work needed repair. It was rebuilt in 1894 and again in 1912. Today, the 57-foot tall cylindrical tower built out of reinforced concrete continues to light safe passage through the rocks around the Mink Islands. This is not something you want to do without a set of charts, or without a chart plotter to know exactly where you are. Because it goes from 50 feet to five feet in about a quarter of an inch. Five kilometers northeast of Red Rock is the western shore of Franklin Island and the entrance to Windsor Bay. We were first introduced to this secret bay by a boating couple we met at Big Sound. They asked if we'd ever been to a place they called Not So Secret Bay and it is now on our top three list for Georgian Bay. Windsor Bay is a little tricky to access. You have to steer around a few rocks, and it's a good idea to put a spotter on the bow. But once inside, there are a dozen completely protected spots to drop the anchor. It's inside of Franklin Island, which can be a bit exposed. The entrance does face southwest, so you've got to be a bit careful coming in. But once you wheel around the corner here, it is completely protected. Now, it's called Not So Secret Bay because, well, if you look at the charts alone, you might not venture in here. You basically have to be brought in by someone else. And that's exactly what happened to us. And I've seen five or six 45 and 50 foot aft cabins moored in here, not more than a few feet from the rocks, where you could step off the swim platform and right on the shore. Pick up a couple of climbing cams of various sizes. 
they can lock into cracks in the rock and hold plenty of weight to keep a stern line tight. I've got an old, maybe eight-year-old Jimmy Sticks that, as you can see, rolls up into a tiny little ball, perfect for traveling by boat. There are several inland lakes on the island that you can paddle and portage to, including Eagle Lake, Beaver Lake, and Lily Lake. But my favorite spot is the southernmost end of Windsor Bay. Just past a narrow channel that is too shallow for most boats, the bay opens a little, and there is a small rocky island that you can stop on to rest if need be. The water is clear, and you can often see the odd lake trout sunning themselves near the surface. When the sun is shining, this beautiful sanctuary can be difficult to leave. Not to worry, we'll be back.